on school days, the streets have rates of car crashes and injuries that are far higher than average New York City streets, especially during the hours that kids are arriving in the morning and leaving the afternoon. You know, we're seeing, unfortunately, some of the highest rates of traffic crashes around the city resulting in fatalities, but an even worse figure is this year alone in 2022, we're seeing the highest rates of children being killed due to traffic violence. School streets are especially important at pickup and drop-off times. That is the time that we're seeing the most crashes around schools, and it's very dangerous for students and families and for teachers. There's something like 1,600 school buildings in New York City, public school buildings, and we think every one of them should have an open street in front of it, at least one side of the school. They're good for safety, the air is cleaner, it's quieter, it gives kids space. We have 26 blocks, 1.3 miles. How many schools along those blocks? Well, ooh, we have 7,000 kids that go to the schools here. There are like several that are actually on 34th Avenue, and there are others that are right off 34th Avenue. We don't have a lot of space, play space for the kids. I mean, they have a tiny little yard, and I'm dreaming about like having open assemblies out here, or you know, like do yoga, let them have their lunch out here. You know, we got together a group of parents, and we had some calls, and we talked about how this is an equity issue, and this is space that should belong to us, and that our yeah. children should use. And I think it's important to have like a partnership. I think like it was really great to go to the principal and know that she supported us, and then you know. Once we presented it to the parents, it was like, oh yeah, of course, that makes total sense. Why haven't we done this? 70% of our neighborhood is roads that cars drive on that aren't safe for kids. And our kids are so crowded that pickup, dismissal, drop off, recess are all super stressful. Now we have the opportunity to make our streets safer with a place like Paseo Park. Safer for our children to play, to walk to school, to know that when they walk down, they can enjoy space in our community without having to worry about cars zipping by every second that could endanger them or their lives. This is really about making our streets, our 34th Avenue, safer for pedestrians and more accessible for everyone. I call it Attack of the Bubbles. You can see there's a huge demand for something like this with all the kids out here running around, playing with their friends. What do you think having this kind of programming, these kind of activities adds to the open street and to the, the perception of the open street in the neighborhood? We recognize that uh, there are there is a, a slight inconvenience if you're a driver, right? But if you see your whole neighborhood outside enjoying themselves, then you weigh that slight inconvenience with all the joy that comes out of you. And by doing these things, that's why you see other pop-ups. Because people say, oh, I saw this in 149, I saw this in 398. Why can't we have this in 212? So, this is nice. Yeah. Like this, every school front, if you block the road, and you can do it. And my kids like to come here and play here with the gym teacher. We have like a, a nice open street in this area and in front of the school with a lot of kids. It's wonderful. I appreciate all this effort that we've been doing for this community. I'm standing here at the intersection of East Fordham Road and Webster Avenue in the Bronx. There is a middle school near this intersection which has some of the most dangerous streets around it of any public school in New York City. I think more pedestrians have been injured during school pickup and drop-off hours outside of this middle school than any other school in the city in a six-year window. There is no doubt that crashes, that unsafe streets affect communities like ours, communities of color, immigrant neighborhoods, so much more than they do other neighborhoods in this city. And therefore, it matters to our children, to our seniors, that we make the streets of our neighborhoods safer. The more students of color uh, or poor students in a school we found, the more dangerous the streets are around it. So for example, 
uh, school day injury rates are nearly 50% higher outside of school buildings that have majority students of color than school buildings that have majority white students in New York City. At the moment, we're using our open street to hold programming like for students during the school year, um, sort of as one-off events to kind of show teachers and staff and the administration that this is something that we could be doing every single day. Many of our schools, especially in Uptown and the Bronx, are you know underfunded, have smaller facilities, or don't have working facilities indoors. Some don't have working air conditioning systems and air systems. And so having you know a fresh outdoor space to go to as an alternative is really key to you know having that enjoyable, dignified <laughs> childhood that we all deserve. I think it's important to have like open streets for schools, especially because it becomes another space for young people to do um, experiential learning, to be able to have lunch outside, to be able to have other types of like classroom activities in the outdoors and really connect to the community. What do we want? Permanent plaza. When do we want it? Now. Do you think this area should become a permanent plaza? So it's pretty easy to walk across the street to get candy. <laughs> we are in Park Slope on 4th Street at 5th Avenue, also known as 4th Street Plaza, also known as Park Slope Play Street. It was a play street at one point, but over time it became an illegal parking lot, essentially. It's an open street for the summer and we're hoping it will become a, a permanent plaza. Between the park and the Old Stone House and the school, it kind of creates this cultural campus, which is something that we've been uh, really advocating for for many years. This school that we're sitting next to, Middle School 51, has 1,200 students. They have limited space, their cafeteria is quite small, so they have a free period for lunch and you see 1,200 people kind of racing out the doors at lunchtime. School streets, plaza streets are so beneficial to everyone. As we know, crashes around schools are at a high around New York City. So uh, definitely school streets addresses safety, um, but also environmental impact in terms of like idling cars and buses. Yeah, well, I mean, look at all the kids that are out here. I mean, this is a matter of basic mobility, right? And we're giving them the independence to walk and bike and get around on their own. And that is the secret sauce of a good city. <laughs> As it stands right now, getting a school street is not that easy. There's a long process. There's a lot of paperwork to fill out that's a little bit confusing and a little bit onerous. We think it should be a lot easier. We hear that the DOT is very eager to implement more school streets and that's so exciting. We think that schools need a lot of support in doing this. They need to better understand how to close streets to traffic, how many people are needed for that. They really need the logistics help, the money, and the tools to do this. As the chair of the Committee on Parks and Recreation in our New York City Council, I can say without question that our City Council is committed, is dedicated to expanding green space and expanding public space in our city. We've seen from the pandemic how crucial it is to have public space, for us to come together to restore us. It matters from a standpoint of climate justice, it matters from a standpoint of equity and racial justice, and it matters from a standpoint of safe streets and public health.